John, I know it's not the, the obviously the way you would want it to happen, but um, considering all the Tommy Sweeney's gone through in his career, to, to have an opportunity with Dawson out this week, how much excitement is there for you just to, from his individual point of view? Yeah, he's, he's worked hard to get back uh, to where he is and, and contribute. Um, so it's good. It's a it's a good story, and and uh, we're happy for him. Albeit it's at, uh, you know, seeing a guy go down in Dawson, um, is is not what we want. But uh, next man up. How did the team reset uh, through the bye week, and you know whatever lingering thoughts of the Titans uh, still linger. Yeah, I mean you, you you try and get away best you can, and um, learn from it, uh, and then. Make sure you can get away a little bit and get your get, get a little bit of a break there. But um, we're back at it and certainly have a lot to work on. What's you talked about uncomfortable truths entering this weekend? Just um, just what what might be some of the things that you found, especially in regards to defense and applying pressure. Uh, in terms of what we need to work on, yeah, yeah I, I got to do I got to do a better job putting them in position to be successful. Let's let's just start there. Sean, what's, what's getaway look like for for you as a head coach? What's that? Um, yeah, I mean, you try and get away mentally best you can. Um, but when you're passionate about something, I don't think you really get away, you know, especially in the middle of a season. So get away is more, you try and get away a little bit more in the off season. Um, but this time of year, it's hard to really get away, honestly. Hey, Sean, um, you know, this is a division po opponent on a six game losing streak. How dangerous are they, given those two factors? Yeah, just look at their roster. I mean, it's a good, really good football team with talent, um, starting with the quarterback all the way through their entire roster. I mean, look at the number of first-round picks they have on that football team, high picks. Um, so I think you just start there, and, and then you watch the games that they've played, um, you know, especially the last two. I mean, they're right there. So. Sean, how do you balance um – self-scouting versus looking ahead to the next opponent during the bye week. And has that evolved for you over the years? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's a little bit the same, but, but a little bit different every year, just based on kind of what's, what's ahead, um, where the bye falls relative to where we are in our season, and, and then what the next week looks like. Is it a long week, short week, uh, normal week, you know, that being a seven-day week? So... Um, it always has a little bit of a different feel to it just based on what it looks like the following week. What changed this year with it being earlier? I'm sorry? What changed this year with it being earlier? Uh, I think just the more than anything, just coming off the Monday night was the biggest change. Um, you know, we've had, I think, usually around week four, or so they, the buys start, you know, out there around the league, and last year was later. Um, uh, this year, just coming off the Monday night was a little bit different. Um, but still wanted to give the guys enough time to get out of here and get get some rest. Two has looked pretty good since he came back from the injury. What um, what have you seen from him the last couple of games? Yeah, he looks like he's playing good football. Um, you see how he's developing um, with more time and and uh, you know his, the the rapport he's building with his receivers and tight ends. Uh, I think that's evident on film. Coach, you always talk about having your eye around the rest of the league, seeing some COVID cases pop up, coaches, players. Is that yeah. just a sobering reminder here inside the building to stay focused? Yeah, it's real. Um, you know, it's real. And, and uh, you know, it's out there, and we've got to continue to be smart as best we can. Um, that's all you can do, really, and just try, try the best you can not to put yourself in that position. Is it an inevitable in some cases? It probably is. I'm not a doctor, but it's out there, and we just got to be as smart as we can and aware as we can. Sean, I know you were, you were asked this last week, but now that the new week is upon you, you, got, you guys showed such resilience last year coming out of Arizona, sitting through the bye week with that. Do you expect the same kind of resilience from your group this time around? Yeah, you know, I believe in this football team. I think uh, the rest remains to be seen, Kim, in terms of uh, how we trend, uh, you know, one week at a time, albeit so. Uh, every team's different. Um, you know, having said all that, I believe in this football team. We'll see where it takes us. Is, is, you, you mentioned Sweeney earlier. Is he at the point where he can just plug and play for Dawson, or is he is he not quite there yet? You maybe have to scale back how you use a tight end this week. No, full confidence. Yeah, full confidence in Tommy. I know the players feel the same way as do the rest of the coaches. Where's, um, where's Dawson at in terms of um, since he had the surgery and what's what's the timeline look like? 
Yeah, I don't know fully on the timeline. Uh, right now, I know he'll be out this week. Sean, anyone, else, anyone else will not practice today? Uh, Spencer Brown uh, has a back, and uh, and Cole will be on a vet day. Reggie Gilliam is kind of like a Swiss Army knife for you back there. He's had his position even change a couple of times. How valuable is he in a situation like this where you might be down a guy at one of those positions where he can fill in for Yeah, he can do he can do, he can can do do what you're talking about, Sal. He can play more than one position, which is good. Uh, and that's impressive for a young player. Coach, I know that everybody talks about clock management from offense, you know, into the half, into the game, all of those things. What about on the defensive <coughs> side? What are the clock management decisions that have to go on during a game for those guys on that side of the ball. I know sometimes you you agree to trade yards in favor of time on the clock if you're ahead, things like that. How long is that list for defensive coaches? Uh, it's it's probably n it's lengthy, but not as long, I would say, generally speaking, Chris, as it is obviously for the offensive side, uh, because usually you're you're trying to score with the ball in those situations. So so, but there are things defensively that we go through um, in those same situations.